Hi, welcome to this introduction to the mini-series on G-2 of the muon. So think like a physicist got a couple of comments about G-2 of the muon. G-2 of the muon is currently a very hot topic in particle physics. So right now, which is February 2021, there is a discrepancy between the experimentally measured value of G-2 and the value that's predicted by the standard model of particle physics. Now, discrepancies between experiment and prediction are always interesting. In particular, they make us ask the question, are we possibly discovering a new principle of nature? The current best experimental result for G-2 of the muon is from the E821 experiment at Brookhaven National Lab, which ran from 1997 to 2001. So let's take a quick look at the difference between the experimentally measured value and the value predicted by the standard model. Okay, so G-2 of the muon, which is often written as G-2 with a subscript of a mu, or g with a subscript of a mu minus 2 is often expressed in terms of a quantity called a mu which is just g minus 2 of the muon divided by 2. Okay so here we have the experimentally measured value of a mu and the value of a mu predicted by the standard model of particle physics. And the first thing to notice about these two numbers is that these values are crazy precise. Okay, so let's take another look at those numbers. So the first thing to mention is that the uncertainty on the experimentally measured value and the uncertainty on the value predicted by the standard model are given in parentheses at the end of the result. So for example, for the experimentally measured value, the error bar on that result is 63 times 10 to the minus 11. And for the value predicted by the standard model, the error bar on that is 43 times 10 to the minus 11. Okay, so now let's look at the difference between the experimental result and the prediction from the standard model. So here we're going to subtract the prediction from the standard model from the experimentally measured result, and we get 279 times 10 to the minus 11 with an error bar of 76 times 10 to the minus 11. And if we take 279 and divide by 76, we get 3.7. And that tells us that the difference between the experimentally measured value and the value from the standard model is 3.7 sigma. And here sigma is the error bar on the difference between the experimental result and the standard model prediction. Okay, so now we can ask a question. Is this an indication of physics beyond the standard model? Well, we don't know, but in particle physics, typically 3.7 sigma is considered not big enough to declare a discovery, but it is big enough to be interesting. Additionally, the muon G-2 experiment at Fermilab is currently working on a new measurement. You can find a link to the experiment website in the description below. And the experiment could release some new results as early as this spring. So stay tuned. Now, if the Fermilab experiment confirms the previous experimental result, this may indicate that we need physics beyond the standard model to explain it. And that would be fantastic because we always enjoy discovering new physics. But even if the Fermilab result eventually agrees with the standard model prediction, the result is still very important. So theoretical physicists coming up with new ideas will have to make sure that their ideas don't change muon g-2 from the standard model prediction enough to conflict with the measured value. In this case, the experimental result becomes an important constraint that feeds into theory predictions. 
So this mini-series will consist of about half a dozen videos on G-2 of the muon. And it is my hope that they will be at the level such that a physics student who is just starting to learn about muon G-2 would find it useful, and that a non-physicist would get a good idea of what G-2 of the muon is and why it's important. So in this mini-series, we're going to try to address questions like the following. What is G-2 of the muon, and why is it called G-2? Where does the predicted value come from? How is it measured? What might the difference between the predicted and observed values indicate? And finally, when the Fermilab G-2 experiment releases their result, I'll try to make a video summarizing that. Okay, so in this video series, we won't be reviewing the particle content of the standard model or how those particles interact with each other. But you might find that background useful for this video series. So there are some videos on this channel that might have information that is useful for you in that case. So you might want to check out the videos Discovery of the Z boson, Discovery of the Tau lepton, and How Can the Measured Number of Neutrino Species Be 2.9963 plus or minus 0 0.0074. And you can find links to those videos in the description below. Okay, so that concludes this short introduction to the mini-series on muon G-2. The next video in the series will be entitled, What is G-2 of the Muon? Part 1.